Welcome to another video. So in this video we're going to be replacing the turbo coolant lines and they leak you know and everybody if you ever read anything about them they leak. Now you can see this one has been repaired and also what you have to look for is you know after the repair which is fine if you get some leaking you know this is the factory type clamp and here's somebody's added clamps but the hoses will start ballooning after the clamps in other words getting bigger expanding and that's when it becomes dangerous because first they'll get bigger and then one day they'll just bust so that's why we're going to do this if you look at this one hasn't ballooned too much but this one is so we're just going to do all the water lines now this is a actually a 2010 750 but all your n63 engines are going to be the same thing whether it's five or 650 or whatever so you look under here these things get intimidating you know you can get very easily be intimidated you take the cover off but don't worry about it it's not that complicated and we're going to go over it step by step. This is not going to be a time lapse. So we're going to go over everything you need to do step by step and take care of it yourself. You, know, you can do this job on a weekend and save yourself a couple thousand dollars over what BMW wants to do it. So anyway, stay tuned and we'll see what we have to do. Okay, so first thing we want to do is unhook the battery. We're going to be messing around everything and you don't want to take a chance of grounding anything out. Then we're going to get rid of our air cleaners and there's just simply a plug here. It plugs in it. And we got a little clip here that flips up. You take your boot loose and this will push down and you just got to use some force and pull it up and pull the whole thing out. So we're going to do that on both sides and then we're going to move on to see what's next. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the reservoir out of the way to get to the alternator. That's the reservoir for the antifreeze for the coolant for your turbochargers. And what we have here is there's the line on top. It's got the spring clips and you just pull up on that clip and then you can wiggle the thing off. Now, it's going to be easier to take this loose here. This goes down. This is a return line. And there's one on the other side that goes down to the return line. And get those loose and out of the way. And then you, there's just two bolts. You take the two bolts out. And you'll be able to get it up. And there will be a hose on the lower part of it that you need to unhook. But it's easier if you take the bolts out and lift it up some first to get to it. And you may have to, you know, if you're going to replace this anyway, which is one of the lines we're replacing, you know, you don't have to worry about it. But it may be easier, even if it's got uh, the factory crimp clamps on there, you can just screwdriver and pry those up and take them loose where this one has a regular hose clamp on it and get this hose out of the way if it, you know, bothers you. But at any rate, we're going to get that out of there next. And you want to put something underneath of it because you're going to have residual antifreeze at any rate to catch the overflow. So we're going to do that next and then we'll move on. Okay, one thing I should have mentioned was be careful you don't lose those clips on the water hoses, the antifreeze hoses. Because you can't buy just the clips. You can't get those. You have to buy the whole thing. So... You know, I always either take them completely off and set them somewhere or push them back on the hose, you know, so they don't get lost. Because if you lose them, you know, you have to replace whatever hose you took loose. So anyway, the next thing we're going to do is we need to take the belt off. And you can see it goes over top of the alternator here. There's just a big Torx that, has a, that goes to a belt tensioner. So... You put your Torx bit in there and then pull up on it and it will loosen the belt. And we're just going to pop it off the alternator, that's all. We don't need to take it completely out. Unless, you know, if you need a new belt, now it's time to do it, you take it completely out. But at any rate, we're going to do that next and then we'll move on. Okay, so next thing we got to do, you can see I've 
already taken it loose here is a v-band clamp and that clamp just looks like this um, you know it's got a little bolt going through here so you just take the bolt out and bend it back a little bit and get that off and that'll free this part up so then if you look down in here you can see that uh, little Torx bolt that goes to your fresh air intake here so we're going to take that loose also now there's a rebreather plug right in here now these lines also is very common on the BMW they break and you know they will cause oil burning problems and different things like that smoke out the exhaust I've heard where people these lines actually break and people think oh I need valve guides you know it's smoking but uh, you know that will take care of it this is fairly new but if you got an older original one you know they become brittle so you just got to get it off of your air intake take that one bolt out and take this scoop off take your clamp loose here and do that on both sides and then we'll move on okay so with all that loose and our intake ducts out of the way we're going to take this alternator loose so what you do is this piece here is just clipped in and you stick a little screwdriver in there where my finger is and pry on a little bit and this will pop loose there's a plug here you need to unplug it's right there take the tube out of here so you'll be able to pull this up and get it out of the way some now if you look down in there there are four I'm trying to picture it, four uh, Torx bolts two on this side and two on this side over here and you should be able to pull these uh, hoses back out of the way take those loose and there's also a Torx right here and right here take those out and then this bracket should come off and we'll move on to the next thing okay so staring at the front of it to the right side of the alternator here you'll see there's a that's where your alternator is charging to and this cap that's just a cap so we got to take that bolt off then there's a plug right back here that needs to be unplugged and there is one uh, fuel line clamp right here that goes to the bracket. We need to take that loose and then there's one of these on the other side. So we take that loose, that bolt loose and unplug it and the alternator should slide forward off the bracket. So we're going to do that next. Okay, so the alternator is out of there. It, a little bit of finesse but it will come out and just leave a wire part of it in there next thing we need to do is move on to these tubes here now we need to take these loose and there's a couple torx bolts in there we need to take out and this piece we can unclip it right here but this is what i'm saying if it's old and original you know be careful with it because it's going to be fragile this is newer like i said before then we're going to take this top brace piece off here and there's a couple of torques down here on the side and there's one up here in the top we're going to take those loose so we're going to take these rebreather tubes off and the top piece off next so let's get that done and move on okay so next thing we want to do is take the oxygen sensors out if you look at these they just got these little cups and you just pop the cups out and these just have clips it's just for heat protection and you pop those out and use a wrench to take it loose we're also going to remove the heat shield if you look around you'll see um, just torx bolts in all the way around just find them all take them loose and take this off now I just unplugged the oxygen sensors one is around and one is kind of square but it probably doesn't matter but I would put them back left and right where I took them out of just for the sake of doing it and try not to mess them up you know you can make them fail if you 
bang them around and get grease and oil and stuff like that on them. So, at any rate, we're going to take the heat shield loose, take the oxygen sensors out, and we'll move on. Okay, with all that removed, then we can move on. You can see down in there, that's the famous Y, plastic Y fitting that everybody talks about that fails. So, we're going to dig down there a little bit deeper and see what's going on. But the next thing we got to do is we want to remove our lines. So we have a water in and out on the sides and then the oil in on the top. Now, we need to take those loose and any, like right here, uh, bolts that are connecting it. And then if we look down inside there, if you look there, you can see that's your oil return line. And that's the one that's famous for getting stopped up. So we need to be able to get, we need to get down in there and take those uh, bolts out. So we're going to do that next and that will free up. We seem like we're getting somewhere. Okay, so next thing we got to do is we're going to take this uh, C-band off of our turbo to our catalytic converter. So we take that loose. That's easy enough to get to. There's two bolts, one for each one, one for each turbo. And you'll be able to move that clamp completely out of the way. Then if you look down inside there, there is a bolt to your exhaust manifold. So once you take these off, you can kind of get down in there. Now it's tough to get to, but it can be done. People do it every day. So you just got to use your patience, see what kind of tools you got to bend around corners and so on. But it, you want to remove these clamps all the way. So once you take that bolt out, you'll be able to separate it. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, hinged almost, and you can get it out of there. So if it helps you a little bit to move something out of the way, you know, move it, get it out of there, whatever you got to do. But at any rate, we got to take those two loose next. And then there's a plug for your turbo. And there's a vacuum line. Here's a vacuum line that goes down to a vacuum that over there. You have one of those on each side, each turbo has their own. So you just need to unplug that and unplug the uh, line. And if you get that bottom exhaust manifold bolt loose, uh, it will, the turbo will be free then and it should come out. So we're going to go ahead and do that and see where we end up. Okay, so the turbos are off. You can see down in there it looks kind of messy like an oily problem. So we're going to take this shield off. There's just a couple screws inside here and the two up front. Take this shield off and see if we get a better view of what's going on inside. See what, what we got with the oil problems. Um, I did take these loose. Gives you a little more play and room. It's just the bracket that holds the cats on. Another thing too, you know, I've done this out of stupidity. Make sure you put something in your exhaust pipe holes. I dropped a washer down inside an engine one time and trashed the engine first time I turned the key. So anyway, you know, it just takes a second to cover up the holes. You never know if something's going to fall down there. You don't see it. You know, even if you do see it, you don't want to have to pull a head off or something like that to get to it. So anyway, we're going to take that cover plate off and get down in there a little bit deeper and see what we can see. So it looks like most of the leaking's coming from turbo oil lines, and it's not that bad. I know it looks pretty dirty, but that's over how many years so I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop here and we're going to clean it up real good and put it back together now you, you definitely also want to change the oil when you do something like this too because those are the return lines for the oil and it's almost impossible to keep 100% of the debris out so you want to chart, change your oil and start with a fresh set of oil but any rate, we're going to go ahead and clean that up, and then we'll move on. Okay, so we're going to start to put it back together here. So, these cooling lines 
actually need to be in before you set the turbos down in there because there's not enough room to get them in afterwards. So that line comes over to down here in the front, as you can see right down there, and comes up. And it helps to set these lines out the way they go so you can see because it can be a little bit confusing. But at any rate, you know, I leave the plastic and all on there. They'll flex around. It's just the way that they're bent. You can't get them in behind the turbo. So get that set in place. And like I said, I wouldn't tighten anything up. I would just leave everything loose just so it's set in there. And then we're going to reverse do the turbos. So we're going to start with the one on the right side of the car left facing at first is I think I just because I think that'll be easier so we're gonna do that next and then we'll move on okay so the first turbos in got all my lines started they're not tight they're just started in there and next thing we got to do is stick the second turbo in so we're gonna go ahead and work on that and hook up our lines and see what we got left. Okay, so there we have it. It's all back straight and new. And I hope this video helps you out some. Be sure to subscribe. We got tons of videos on this kind of stuff. And you have a pleasant day and thank you for watching.